Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Infrastructure team meeting. Today we are the 17th September 2024. Around the virtual table, we have five persons. Myself, Damien Duportal, uh, Jay Reddy, Mark Waite, Stefan Merle, and Kevin Martins. Okay, so let's get started with the announcement. Uh, the release last week, the weekly release 2.476, has been successfully released. Uh, we were able to deploy it immediately. Uh, please note, uh, we had issues on that release uh, because we had to use, we had to update a plugin. I don't remember which plugin it was. 2475 was LDAP. Oh yes, job DSL plugin had minor issue. So no, it was not mandatory, but we discover issue uh and we had to update it and and not just we discovered an issue had to update it and the update fixed a problem that others would have seen so it was if i remember right a matter of a few hours and a really great story thank you thanks for doing it yeah it was and it was related to spring security i think yes uh the you they were Job DSL was using Spring Security deprecated classes. Mm, right. So the update was using the proper classes, but that was a way to to see uh, to see it. So thanks, great work, everyone, immediately, and thanks for the help on the developer team. Uh, this week we have um, a two point four seventy seven, which started on time. So we will wait for this issue, for this release to be performed, and then we will continue. Uh, just a near reminder, tomorrow the next LTS baseline will be selected. Uh, so yes, that will decide which will be the next LTS line, which will introduce mandatory GDK 17, at least. <laughs> Do you have other announcements? Nope. Okay, let's continue then. Uh, next week, we will have 2.478. Uh, we will be, two, uh, we are 17, so we will be the 24. Uh, I don't remember, is there a date for the next LTS? There, the dot there, there, there is. It's on the calendar for 2nd to October. Oh, true that. And then the next LTS after that, yeah, 2.462.3. And then the next LTS after that, 20, uh, the 30th, so 10-30. And I, it will be either 2.476.1 or 2.477.1, right? It's it, it, whatever's selected tomorrow, right? Exactly, very good. Um, for the 2nd of October, so Stefan, I will let you drive the infra port because I will be on the holidays. <laughs> Lucky you. <laughs> And for the last one, the world team will be there. I think if I have a proposal, if it's okay for everyone, including J you, Jay, I propose that for the this one, uh, end of October, uh, you will shadow us to see a full end-to-end -end release. I think uh, we are, we should be good enough for the prerequisite for you to see what is happening. So you won't have any responsibility. You will be shadowing either Stefan or Hai, looking at what what does it looks like usually. Oh uh, yeah, that sounds good. Uh, I don't remember having seen publicly explain security advisories. So no problem on this one. We have a bunch of credential expiration. One is the 19 for stats Jenkins IO, and so we will have to perform this either today or tomorrow, last uh, last uh, deadline. 
The other are a few days later, but we have a bunch on the 22. Uh, we have fixed one last week, the packer that was already expired. We have a bit of Cloudflare API token 1st of October. I propose we do them uh, as soon as possible. And also we have a batch. We received today a batch of uh, uh, updates that should be middle of October. But yeah, um, we'll see depending on the time, but we will have to watch this. Uh, but yeah, the five first one are still important. I should have created an issue for the current milestone, but we were overwhelmed by the update center stuff. And we have two major events. One is happening today, uh, DevOps World Virtual Online, so you can still attend. And uh, in two days, we will have, I hope we will have CD Mini Summit in Vienna. I hope the rain stopped because, yeah, that's catastrophic in that area. Uh, the, some part of, um, of Austria and countries around Middle Europe are, are suffering server flooding. Uh, right now, Bruno is in Vienna, and since yeah, we saw the Danube, the uh, the river is high but not drowning. So yeah, I hope it will it won't rain more. Crossing finger. Right now, the city minister summit is still on the agenda. So thanks Olivier and Bruno on this one. Anything else on the upcoming calendar, folks? Something else to add? Nope. Okay. Let's have a quick look at the budget. Uh, Azure CDF account. Uh, clearly, we see the effort this month. Uh, the forecast is at 3.7K instead of a target of 4.5. So good job, everyone. That's 700 bucks less. Uh, most of these come from different effort, including moving Redis on the sponsors. So it's not disappearing. We have not removed thing. We have not. Uh, decreased cost is just we move costs somewhere else where it makes sense. Um, reminder, we have two issues that could allow us to decrease these costs, not only, but that will help on that matter. Uh, no need to focus on this one. Uh, on the sponsorship credits, we have consumed 5.7K credits, uh, still a forecast at 10K. So we are half of September and we are entering the, okay, uh, we might run out of credits. We have 5K. So at that rate, we have five months in front of us. So uh, middle October, November, December, January, February. So middle February, right after we're back from the FOSDEM, then we don't have any more credits while it ends in May. Uh, so we'll, we might have to think about this one. Um, Digital Ocean, we have consumed uh, a few. Oh, I haven't updated this one. Uh, I need to update, but we are at around uh, 5K uh, remaining. We don't consume a lot, so we have plenty of room here to move virtual machines until the end of year. We will have to think about renewing these credits. So depending on if they want to renew and how much they, do they want to renew, that will help us expand our cost strategy. I haven't had time to look in details on the consumption for AWS. However, we clearly saw a huge decrease with the brownout of 24 hours, which validates our strategy. So if we want to go better on AWS, billing costs, we have to continue the effort on the update center. So I still have um, an issue to write, Sam. We were overwhelmed by the bad surprises we had this week. However, I had time to present the idea of the, the cost moving to Mark. So if it's okay for everyone, I'm gonna start by sharing the idea here and I will try to write it down properly. So the whole idea is to say, oh, we know that Azure CDF will continue next year. We don't know the amount. I will make the hypo the wild hypothesis that it will be the same cost. So 4.5K per month. We should stay at that budget. Um, we don't know if we will renew the Azure sponsorship, the Digital Ocean sponsorship, and the AWS 60K credits we have in sponsorship. Uh, if we look at the expiration date, 
DigitalOcean will be the first that one has archived in Kinsayo. So beginning of 2025, maybe we will have to move archived in Kinsayo somewhere else. Then the second one to expire is AWS. We have 60K untouched. The, the idea here is that we will have to find a balance between consuming as much possible as these credits during the three months left, three months and a half, versus what we put here must be able to move quickly back during the month of January if they don't want to renew. Third problem, uh, the Azure sponsorship credits. That one has all the agent for trusted or cert for CI Jenkins Sayo. It also holds the agent for infra CI and the Redis database used by Update Center and Get Jenkins Sayo. So that means this one with the current consumption will be end of credits in February. we could use it until end of May 2025 to have some margin. So that's interesting to, to let something uh, hosted here. Many the Redis database, for instance, that's not something we want to move. It's easy to move as we saw in the past weeks, but we will want to avoid that effort right now because we can move it last minutes and it consume a lot of credits. The proposal I have is the following. We should start by CI Jenkins IO as soon as possible. Out from Azure. And we move it um, to AWS. Because CI Jenkins IO is fully autonomous. Somehow, uh, we have a few uh, uh, exceptions, but we can move it. It used to run on EC2 completely then partially between Azure and Amazon. And now we could move it back to, uh, uh, to Amazon. By doing so, we could expect five to seven K per month that are consumed here to be used by AWS. That one would increase our chances to have AWS renew our account. If they don't want, even if we start consuming for whatever reasons, then that means we will have to move back CI Jenkins IO. Most probably on Azure, because on Digital Ocean, we are lacking some elements required for CI Jenkins IO, such as Windows agents. So that's the proposal because we have moved CI Jenkins IO twice since the beginning of the year, one from AWS to Azure and then from Azure CDF to Azure Sponsors. So we, we know that it's easy. That's one virtual machine and a bunch of agents. There might be some preliminary or additional work though. Uh, controller is easy to move. That one is easy. That's a one uh, virtual machine. We get the whole template on Terraform. We add it to the new sponsor and we start the, the move. Um, we know agent VMs is easy. Packer, then EC2 plugin. We might have to update the configuration to the latest changes, check everything is good, but with the work done and finished last week by Jay and the work done by Stefan on the Packer images earlier this year, that will be easier than uh, what we used to have in the, in the past. And both, Linux and Windows, Linux, Intel, ARM64 and Windows are supported. So we might, the, the, the only, let's say, um, easy but annoying part is Packer image because we will need to add more Packer image declination to build the EC2 images and start again building new versions. Um, Linux container agents is easy. EKS. So again, we know no availability zone. That's the lesson from last time. We start EKS and we run everything. Uh, it includes internal ACP, of course. We will have to move the internal ACP we have today to this new system. It's internal. Uh, we have the same feature, so that one should be okay. 
the on, uh, we only have two now uh, remaining issues that are not easy or need some work. First, Windows Container Agents. That one means ACI to uh, Kubernetes. We need to start defining node pools on the AKS cluster even today with Windows to do the transition or do it at that moment with the new EKS Windows node pools. Theoretically, EKS supported since one year and a half. We will see what will be the best moment to do the change. ACI is a container service uh, in Azure, just as a reminder. So we will change the service, the implementation of this agent that might be uh, more than just moving clouds. And the second problem is a Docker registry. Does AWS SCR support mirroring mode? That's the, the, the main worrying part for me. Uh, as you, uh, AWS provides container registry, that's okay. However, do they support the proxy mode where you you tell the Docker engine, hey, use that container registry that will act as a proxy like ACP, but for Docker Hub. Um, if we move CI Jenkins IO to AWS and we cannot have the Docker registry, that's okay. That won't impact trusted or cert like it used to do in the past because they will have different uh, public IP classes. However, that could be a slower done on some of our systems. Then the second top level action will be move CloudBees AWS remain, remaining VMs to DigitalOcean. We have credit on DigitalOcean and we have the same challenge on A, we haven't consumed a lot. If we want them, if we want to give them an incentive to renew and give us enough credits, even if they decrease, that's not a problem because we don't consume a lot, that makes sense, but we need to to increase our usage. Uh, for that, my proposal is that we have three virtual machines currently working on AWS. Once we move the update center out of this, we can move these machines to DigitalOcean as it. We create the new virtual machines. We map the SSH key, security groups, data disks, same size. We air sync the content, we shift puppets, and that's OK. So I propose that we work on these two top level elements for the upcoming three weeks in parallel of the update center. Prior priority being CI Jenkins IO. Uh, that's the, the biggest one. That's the idea. I propose we don't uh, do too much on this one. I need to write this down. One issue with sub issues, write down elements, see if we have feedbacks and we start planning for operations uh, next team meeting. Is that okay or for everyone? Yes, so the, the idea really is after updates.jenkins.io, let's also increase our consumption, let's consume from the AWS donation and ci.jenkins.io is certainly a high consumer, right? That's a, so that would move agents and and agents and the controller itself, not just the controller. Yeah, we have to have the agents and the controller on the same provider, not right. to pay for the bandwidth. And ah, the ACP good. now. Oh, oh, right. Artifact caching proxy and container registry you mentioned. Got it. So it's it's a it's a it's Package. an entire system move, if you will. So a, a very large move to portably move to attempt to move from one cloud provider to another. Exactly. Technically, we can move on first the agent, then the controller, or the other way around. As Stefan said, the impact is bandwidth, and a bomb build will be slower because they will be spread different on different clouds. But ideally, if we can move everything at the same time, that will be easier. Or when, when I say at the same time, that could be one day controller, one day agents. One, we can do step by step during a full week. We don't have to move everything at the same time if it feels risky, but I would prefer to have something quite short in time window. Yeah, so I, I see a lot of work, but it feels like the, the right thing to do. It's certainly a, a good thing to be able to use the, the AWS donation. That yeah. makes sense. 
Uh, absolutely. That's a risk we are taking in terms of effort because we might have to duplicate the effort. Is it worth it? The answer is technically no, but strategically, yes, because that will be an incentive for renewal credits. So uh, one that I had not considered previously, um, mm -hmm. where we're, it wouldn't make any sense, I assume, to move PKG from its current AWS environment to the donated AWS environment because we're almost ready. We're, we're less than a month away from PKG's yep. cost reducing dramatically, right? So it, it won't help us to move that one. It's not enough of a help financially. Yeah, exactly. Okay. If we have to spend that amount of work because PKG won't be the easiest to move, mm -hmm. I would prefer spending it on CI Jenkins IO because Got that it. looks like a lot of work, but somehow it's really uneasy because it's already isolated between its subnets. So the effort is not that much. Thank you. And more, more we move CI, more we learn how to move it around different kind of, of providers and easier it comes. Right. Okay. We, good. we don't have a lot of bad surprises by moving CI also. Additionally yeah. to what Stefan said, while PKG, trust me, that will be a fun part. <laughs> yes. well, and, Even and, without the update center. Right. CI.jenkins.io is focused on Jenkins core and plugin maintainers, whereas updates.jenkins.io is 300,000 Jenkins controllers worldwide who are users. Don't, so don't that, remind us okay. that. <laughs> <laughs> Apply pressure on the sensitive variable. Right, that, that's okay. Just just, just letting you know you that guys. what you're doing matters. That's a way to say it. This matters. What we do matters. Uh, nice one. <laughs> so that's the idea. I let you think about that. It's really important uh, to have an advice I, on this. I have a question. Yep. I have a question for you, Damien. Do you think we can, uh, in between, enable the spot instances on the on the Azure? Uh, um... I've sent six times uh, okay, the same, so we're done. Okay. and they said no, it's not ready yet. It's not. Most probably, it's because it's credits. So yeah, I know. Uh, but if if we can save two two months just by enabling yeah. it, that would Absolutely. have been absolutely. Cool. That's a really good point. That's legit, but yeah, I alas, I alas. That's why I've I started to think about this, and I'm I'm here proposing this because yeah, but good point to remind uh, this. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I agree. That that move is good, but we will be able to use Spot on Azure on AWS yeah. though. Uh, that's all for the cloud billing agenda and announcement. Do you have something else? Nope. Okay, so let's go on what are the tasks that we're able to finish. First, we had the Azure VM outage. In fact, we had three. One was unnoticed, it was at the storage level. Uh, second one uh, uh, was there since the beginning of the summer, uh, but it wasn't noticeable. Sometimes we were having CI Jenkins IO taking time to spin up an agent that was just a minor outage. But we had a big one where during three days trade during the US office hours, Azure was unable to spin up machines. And the problem was US wide. And during hours, the builds were queued on all the controllers. That slowed down the weekly release last week. Uh, we took two hours uh, at least waiting for the agents to be able to build the Docker image. The problem is now gone. It has been documented. So we closed the outage. Um, Azure teams were missing uh, hardware on US East 2 region, and they had to fix their Hyper-V uh, uh, data center scale uh, scheduler for virtual machines. AKS, I don't know on which on which magic, uh, but wasn't AKS wasn't uh, impacted, only single virtual machines. So yeah, the short term would have been move everything to Canada data center or another data center. Yeah, no, no, uh, that's, I mean, that that would have been too much pain. We are not ready for quickly switching. So we accepted that it was slow. It was not critical. It was not broker. We just had to be patient. So that was okay. If it would have been more critical than that, we would have talked about moving to another region. But yeah, that was not needed. Problem is fixed, so nothing else to add on this one unless you have questions uh, or need details. Nope, okay. 
Uh, thanks, uh, Stefan and Jay. So you walked uh, and helped me deliver the Packer image renewal. So we missed that uh, the credential used to build our Packer images was uh, uh, expired. So now it's on the calendar. Now it's Certainly. tracked. So thanks, Jay. Jay, so did good. the update CLI yeah. and we will have the, the issue and everything. Yes. Good job. So really good job. Uh, also, we have a new sponsor. OSS Planet is now an official Jenkins mirror. So we have a lot of mirrors, which, by the way, um, a has a team <laughs> um, uh, cooked. Uh, be careful, get Jenkins IO. Ah, has duplicated mirror entries. No impact for end users. It's just visual when you go on the mirror list page, you see entries that exist twice. This is because uh, we wanted to be smart and uh, migrate the Redis database to the new instance. Spoiler alert, mirror bits uh, doesn't support migrating this. It's a distributed system with uh, some hiccups. And so it duplicated entries. The only solution for us to fix that visual problem is to dump and clean up the whole Redis database, or at least the one of GetJenkins.io, Get and run a scan. That will not break the system at all because we have the fallback. So GetJenkins.io will always be able to answer requests by sending them to archives GetJenkins.io on DigitalOcean. However, that's an operation that has no value because it doesn't have any user impact. Most probably it will disappear over months. We can plan it later, but right now it's not a priority. So we didn't open an issue for that. If you see user reports that shows that what I'm seeing is wrong, that could be possible. We haven't seen issue on the logs, on the access log or on user reports, but I cannot be 100% sure of this. So yeah, if that's me... the case, we will operate. For me, it's a punition for you working on the migration of Redis on the weekend. I mean, that's okay. forbidden. Okay, fair. I accept, I accept this. <laughs> no, no, fair. <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> uh, next step, congratulations, Jay, for providing GDK 17 and 21 build tools for all the Jenkins contributor and all the Jenkins controllers. So now, Anyone can use test container, for instance, with GDK 17 or 21. It wasn't possible on CI Jenkins IO until this work. Because in the case of test container, the developer on their plugin build plugin function pipeline, they say use container agent false. And immediately they were stuck to GDK 11. They could use the build tools with GDK, but that started to create issues. Right now, they have the choice. Second benefits, benefit, sorry, oh, my French brain part speaking is, uh, is kicking. Second benefits is now any pipeline running on CI Jenkins IO will run properly on trusted CI. And that one is for you, Mark. Now you can use Maven 21 on trusted CI for, de for deployment. I don't think we need to change the pipelines, but now we have the same feature parity when regarding the pipeline labels. So great job. Thanks, Jay. That was really, really useful. Yeah, thanks, team. This was a huge uh, team effort. Uh, to have an, an idea of how long it took to like finish this issue, when we started this issue, I think the Packer images was version 1.20, and now it's 2.20. So no, I think uh, two, two months of hard work. Yeah. <laughs> so good job, team. Uh, anything else on the GDK 21 agents? Note it's not the default build tool. It's still 11. We will have to think about that, but that's the, just to give you a scope. Next issue, we had problems since uh, the surprise penetration testing two weeks ago. Uh, some of our websites were failing to deploy. So the problem has been uh, spotted. There were issue, human issue. I did change some credential and I did human mistakes while doing that on the weekend. Again, hey, bad me. 
another permission, no, right? No, this one, this one was was emergency. But this one was yeah was emergency. That has been an opportunity, and while you are there, I mention it. I realized that the Netlify organization wasn't two FA enforced. Uh, since Azure asked me to enforce 2FA on Azure, but everyone already has since months, but not on Netlify. So I've set up the technical account with a shared .p like we do for other elements, encrypted on GPG. So anyone can use the 2FA of the technical account. Stefan uh, did this regularly with DigitalOcean. But also, none of you had 2FA. I enabled mine while doing that, so I was also in the same case. But if you need to access to Netlify, you have to authenticate and enable your 2FA before being able to see the website. Otherwise, you will see only your personal space. Uh, by the way, I realized that you can use GitHub authentication and they will use their own MFA on Netlify site. That's really cool. You have the SSO, you are already logged in, no password, nothing. And you set up the MFA and they ask you once a month. So really good user experience. Um, next issue was a plugin contributor uh, that had issue deploying their plugin with the CD method. It appears it, they weren't following all the plugin documentation that has been fixed. So thanks team for helping them. A big thanks, Mark, for helping on the spam Jenkins Jira. I did some as well. We had one or two issues. I think we are missing one here on the list. I need to update it. But yeah, again, heal intended users. I did not add any feedback from the OIC plugin maintainer. Uh, we gave them a solution. They had issue with CodeCov service, but they are using GHA and not CI Jenkins IO. And we, Jenkins Infra team, do not have access to the um, administration of this. It's on the Jenkins CI GitHub organization. It looks like there used to be a token that was used to upload code coverage to CodeCov, but we cannot manage or help. However, they are using the OIC, they are maintaining the OIC plugin. And as Tim and I showed on the documentation of CodeCov, you can do tokenless upload by using OIC. These are two lines. They have to connect one time on CodeCov to set it up, to enable it. It's one click button. They had two lines on the GHA workflow, the equivalent of a Jenkins pipeline. And then all the builds on the pull request will authenticate using OIC to CodeCov, tokenless upload. So they have enough information. They have two solutions. They can either add their own token on the as admin or enable this. So I closed the issue with no answer and we gave solution. Of course, they can reopen. If they have issue, we can help. And finally, there has been a huge work on one of the GSOC projects, uh, working on this to put it on production, the new stats Jenkins.io website. It's in production. And that's now you have a really, really nice looking website. That's really cool. Um, we have issues related to that. Uh, that happen when you wish you wish you, you shift from one production to another. We have dedicated issues for this. I decided to close because there are, we cannot roll back. Uh, the main reason is because you cannot have on GitHub pages the holds production. You cannot have multiple C names, only one. We have set up a C name hold that stat the Jenkins IO to keep the hold uh, website. Huge thanks for Stefan for pushing me on doing this, because thanks to Stefan, when we realized that a lot of users had their usage broken by the new website, they were able to use the whole DNS. The downside is that now we are stuck, we, we must maintain it. So that's hard to roll back. But yeah, in any case, we had issue that was better to decrease, let's say, the error surface. So now it's closed. We have a new website, and now we, we have to take over and continue on fixing the issues that appears along the way. So great job, everyone involved on this one. Uh, we have a brand new website, really cool. Now let's continue fixing issues uh, when they come. And finally, we have one issue closed as not planned. Someone wanted support. Uh, they opened the wrong issue tracker. 
So first of all, any do you have any question, things to add on the closed down issue or not done? Actually, I've got I've got a maybe it's a separate topic entirely. I realized I'd not asked anybody. Hacktoberfest needs needs a discussion. Maybe we put that later. It's not not here, yep. but it's certainly an, a question for us. Yep. Let okay. me add something. Hack. Good point. Hacktoberfest. Great. Thank you. Back to back Thanks. to the agenda. Excuse my taking so no, long no, to no realize problem, we haven't yeah. needed that topic. No problem. So about the work in progress, uh, the main topic is the new update center. Uh, Stefan, are you okay to summarize or should I start and I give you uh, the task? Oh, as you wish, I can I can start and you follow up because I, yep. I will just talk about the the three brown out we did now. Yep. We did two, two first one for one hour to check if there was something really wrong and it was almost okay. And the last one was a 24 hour run out. And we discovered quite a few um, ip up, ip up. Um, so now we are trying to solve them. The main one I would say is the problem with um, a legacy configuration that is going back from time within the Jenkins, even the new Jenkins, because they keep um, the, the same configuration going with uh, an URL to uh, upload the JSON file for the update center with HTTP and not HTTPS. And that seems um, easy to solve and it's not. Uh, we are trying to find ways to uh, avoid uh, developers and users to have to change that. It's a very easy change. There is even a, a, a reset button that uh, enable the, the update of the of the pass easily of the URL. But still we want to um, buy some time and have uh, uh, both HTTP and HTTPS call to resolve and, and provide uh, data. I know that Damien got uh, kind of an alpha beta going on uh, we work together a little and then alone, but we still have some work to do. Um, I don't remember the other issues. I'm sorry, from the top no, of my no head, problem. this one took over. So oh. let's just have a look. All done because the... Mark got a question. Yes, Mark. So, so is it? Uh, I assume it would be okay if we told people. Sorry, you okay, but not ideal. You have to switch from HTTP to HTTPS. It's 2024, and TLS-based connections over the web are are not just common; they're highly, highly recommended. Right, non-TLS yes, connections. You, you, we, we have to keep in mind that that this uh, wrong uh, URL is coming from us because we kept that URL from time to time by by upgrading the, the the Jenkins but keeping that information the same for compatibility I'm assuming so yes I agree we should uh, talk to people and have them upgrade but we need time for that and and breaking everything just because we cannot manage a way out uh, would be would be hard if we spend like a few days and find a way at least temporarily for one or two months until we manage to have our layout in the, in the UI and then blog post and stuff. I think it's the best way. Of course, if it's taking too long, as we are losing money on that, we, we will save money by going on the, on the new uh, version. Um, we will have to break out, but I, I, I hate breaks. I mean, we, we, we have to provide a service. That's why when Damien say we kept the old one and now we have to deal with both of them who have more work, yes, but we provide a service. The more important is not our work, the more important is the people using it. So we're right. working for them. You're 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 very you're much kinder than I am on this one. Thanks, Stefan. That's <laughs> I, I like your I like your way of, of describing it. That, that's we a we very... try. We You're try. very user centered, and that's the right approach here. I, I, I so certainly, if we can, if we can, with a few days of effort or a week of I effort. I mean, we got we got Damien. He's really good. He found stuff completely crazy to manage the <laughs> the traffic and everything. I'm I'm telling you, it's it's amazing. 
I'm, I'm pretty sure we can manage something, not too costly in time, not too costly in, in, in power, um, and that will meet the both. But I agree, we will remove the HTTP um, one day because we have to force people to go there, but but we have to take the time to teach them and tell them and, and communicate, I think. I mean, you're the boss. If you choose, we, we go for the HTTPS only, we go. Uh, no, no, that's great. Thanks. Pro proposal, uh, given where we are with the HTTP tests, we have spent some time Friday, Monday, and earlier today. I propose we decide Thursday, this Thursday, uh, during the afternoon in Europe and morning for the US, we as a team uh, do asynchronously on, uh, on IRC a go, no go. I will open the threads during the afternoon and everyone will say go or no go based on the last changes. Um, right now, just to give you a technical, because I haven't, I have updated the issue with postmortem and the two main issues we have to work on. Uh, these two main issues are because they are user facing. All the rest are infra internal infrastructure. If it has issues, it's for us and it's not user facing. So the first one is the most, the, the, we describe is the most important one. I'm currently experimenting a full HTTP only column. Uh, so that's a non HA uh, service with Apache, its own Apache, its own mirror bits, it's a POC. If that one works for first day, the go no go will say, okay, we integrate this with the update center update and we are done. I don't want to touch update center unless it's uh, the update center generation scripts, unless it's really mandatory. But right now we had promising updates. Uh, so I propose we, we still spend until Thursday. Is that okay for everyone? I'm even okay if it's until next week. Don't don't, oh, cool. don't please don't misinterpret my my question as being being opposed to spending time. This I think you're right that that we should. Stefan's right. We should actively think about our users if we possibly can. So the, if if Thursday works great, if not, if it needs to wait till next week, that's also okay for me. The reason why I don't want to wait too much is uh, not only for we have to spend our effort or. Uh, let's say sparsely, but also because I will be gone for two weeks and I feel really bad letting the poor Stefan underling the update center migration or alone. Okay. That's I not something we should so do much. alone. Right, I, I had forgotten about that. That's an important one. We really do want update center migration done and a week of cushion before you leave on vacation. Yeah, I forgot so, your uh, holidays. I, I would have wanted Sunday. for next week, uh, if Thursday we are able, we might have one brownout, but next next milestone not this one but the one after i will want to have eventually a force brown out and if it work then the real change great so in two weeks i will want to switch to the new update center definitively in two weeks so End that let month. us one week one week before i go um let's go no go http this thursday uh, planning for final migration next meeting. Okay. Eventually, we will announce a fourth brownout to validate the HTTP column and all of the other changes. Uh, another change, but that one should be done from my point of view, and I believe a brownout will validate that. After around 14 to 15 hours, uh, we started to see what I call an eventually consistent system, thanks to, uh, again, uh, SMB CFS file share. Mainly, uh, the update center job regenerates a set of files and hammers the Azure file share. And in the case of Apache, for each request, it reads the HT access file. So combination of a lot of concurrent write and a lot of concurrent reads on an eventually consistent system, which is very well known for decades for not behaving properly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at the moment, uh, Apache start to see corrupted or truncated files. Uh, we have implemented a short-term efficient solution. Every hour now, the Apache server will be restarted without putting the system at risk. We suffer the cost of Kubernetes, 
but we have the features of Kubernetes thanks to that. In that case, Stefan, thanks for your work. <laughs> Stefan implemented a crown job inside Kubernetes, a distributed I didn't one. Merge? Yeah, did you merge? The not yet, right? but we just have but to deploy not, it. It's and, not done. We just have but to it's deploy. almost finished, and yeah. that's a rollout restart, which means Kubernetes says, oh, I need two Apache instances. I'm going to start the two new Apache instances. And if they are healthy, I will move the traffic automatically. If they fail to restart, then I won't move the traffic at all. In any case, this thing is a good thing because Apache is known for years for requiring uh, res, uh, at least re recurrent and frequent reload, at least, in order to synchronize the file system state with its memory thread state. That's why Nginx was created in the first place, to avoid that problem. So you don't want Apache to be a long running server. We tend to restart Apache on update Jenkins IO today, at least once a week. That's the same idea, but except it's safe. That might be enough. That might not be enough for, uh, we have other solution described on the issue, but right now it's good enough for another brownout and uh, going on production. Uh, that's all for the update center. Do you have other points on this one? Okay, so let's roll. Next big topic is the new stats Jenkins IU websites. That has been unexpected, but that's how it works you know, the joy, the joy of production. Uh, first, we have an issue. Stefan is working on this one. Um, Stefan, do you want to describe the issue? Do you feel at ease or do you want me to do it? Yeah, I can try, I can try. We Now that we mix, kind of mix, both the new uh, stat uh, website and the old stat website, we will want to have some uh, pages delivered for from the new website to the old website um, and we cannot have both on the same uh, path so we are trying to uh, avoid that error meaning that when when we call a non-existing file uh, with the new stat website um, the configuration from nginx reply a 200 and and redirect to the index.html because that's the way it's working for the new stat website the problem is that uh, it's it's reply with a 200 uh, error code, and the uh, JavaScript UI is converting that to a 404. But the real world message received, as you can see, thank you, Damien, uh, from Damien, the the you see it, it's in French, sorry, it's uh, 200. And that's the error code. So when you have automatic um, uh, system used on the old website that was on that URL, and they try to find a page that is not existing, the reply is 200 and not 404. So we need to find a way to reply the correct uh, error code, but only for page that are not w uh, uh, weighted expected by the new uh, stat website. So we need to personalize the Nginx configuration for that. And I'm working on that, on that right now. Is that good enough for you, Damien? Uh, tell the other, because I know the issue, so that's, <laughs> I'm not, I'm biased, but is it clear was that, for the other? Was that yes. understandable? Okay, yes, that good. was, thank you. Cool. Stefan works on fixing the nginx curve. Um also so, uh, so, yep, sorry. Uh, sorry I need a I need a, a, a higher level question I think. So we've got we've got users who are API consumers by virtue of downloading files. I, I know I had found one that they had a they had created a a tick a shield a what do you call it a badge and done it based on installation count. And I was no, not aware of that, completely ignorant. And then, so that's now working. So are there some users who are still broken with stats that, with the current state? Do we have some broken users that we know of, or is it rather we're trying to, we're now in the mode of trying to transition towards better? Uh, we are not aware of user broken at okay. least from user report anymore. 
Okay. the last change pushed by Hervé Friday night was able to solve the shield and eventually others. Oh, good. Okay, thank you. That's all then. Thanks. You've that's yep. more than enough. Excuse the the side question. Thanks. Okay. No, no problem. That was the subject. Um, uh, last change by Hervé did fix most of the broken usages. We have to check. We have to check for usages because that's something that has been missing on that topic is checking at least on searching on github.io if there are stat, a request to stats Jenkins IO, check which request and then check if they are okay. So we have to check for usages because maybe we have broken users that don't even know or never report it. So that's worth checking. We also have to roll back plugin sites. Um, hotfix pull request. Since we decided not to roll back, we fixed the plugin Jenkins IO website generation to use all dot stats the Jenkins dot IO. So we need to roll back to the new site to benefit from Hervé's fix. And only once it has been uh, done and we have regenerated the world plugin Jenkins IO website with the new website, then we can say, okay, we are good to go. Um, I think that's, oh yes. And we have to fix, there is an error uh, with the current deployment uh, of stats Jenkins IO, the new website that appears after Hervé fix. So Hervé's fix work for, from user facing point of view, but the deployment step is in error at the end. As he copy reports two broken files uh, across the thousands copied. So we need to deep dive on this one. But that's not preventing the website to be built and deployed. So not a problem. It's just internal thing that's better not to have this kind of report. Um, now we have confirmed and we are taking over these two issues uh, based on other priorities. So that should be OK. It's just we wanted to avoid stepping on each other's toes. So for the next milestone now. Any other question on stats, Jenkins IO? Nope, OK. Uh, GYP database. Uh, we do not update since three weeks the GYP database for a lot of reasons written on the issue. Right now, Stefan is working on a new Kubernetes process uh, that should update it at least once a week. Stefan, I believe you put this in, in uh, uh, on hold time for helping me on the update center. Okay. But since you worked on cron job on this one and uh, uh, the Apache rollout, going back to this one should help you, right? Not really, because in fact, this one helped me for the other one. And now I need to work on the easy copy, but I will need your help to define exactly what okay. to use for that. Um, yes. Need, uh, but in fact, this, this issue helped me for the cron job for uh, HTTPD restart or rollout cron restart. Job is... Okay, cool. So uh, on <laughs> on the GOIP thing, I had a I had seen that the locations of the mirrors that I usually use have actually been updated to different destinations. So something's changed. It's really nice actually because it shows that that I have two mirrors available to me now instead of one because the Chicago the Chicago location of the um, OSU OSL, one of the OSU OSL servers, is no is actually showing it is in Chicago. Uh, so that's how did we get lucky on that? IP. Oh, it's oh, that's not, not GOIP. Oh, uh, it's when we moved the Redis database. Uh, uh, we had to recreate the mirrors with the manual command line mirror bits add, and when mirror bits add a mirror, it's check for ASN of the mirrors and then determine the geographical coordinates if it can. And so uh, what we saw with Stefan is that when we had it back on the new empty instance with the with the migrated Redis, mirror bits, even if it had coordinate for the older mirrors, said, oh, I see the new coordinate of the ASN are these ones. And they updated them. So it's not that the GeoIP database wasn't updated. It was up to date when we did the migration. 
but it's because mirror orbits determine that the coordinate change since the last time they were added. So for Chicago, that one last time it was added, it was by Olivier Werner four years ago, which means the coordinates back four years ago for the same server changed. That's why. I see. Thank you. Okay, so it wasn't that wasn't GOIP at all, but I'm a happy user as a result. Okay, I'm a happier user. Good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we have an issue that doesn't require action for now, as a, uh, opened by Chris. Uh, so he was faster than me. Thanks, Chris. Uh, the infra statistic had, did not receive any updates since July because we need our friend Kosuke to uh, create their VPN access. He sent me a message a few days ago. Oh, crap, I need to spend some time and find some time for this. That's the status report. So anyone interacting with Kosuke, please remind yeah. him. Uh, yeah, Pay him a beer him. for us and remind yeah. him. On hold, waiting for AK. Uh, and we have a new issue that uh, Jay started to work on. Jay, are you okay to summarize or do you want me to do it? Uh, do I think? don't think that would have confused people, so I think you should summarize it. Okay, so we have a request from user working around FIPS support on Jenkins plugin and Jenkins core, and they need the age, the build agents to have more entropy. Uh, that's at least on Linux, uh, is done through using RNGD and FHD daemon system uh, that makes it portable across virtual machines because it's not a, kernel, a Linux kernel feature. So we want to have these two tools and daemons installed and, read and starting at least on virtual machines. For container, it's another story. So uh, we've listed all the area where we have agents the most probable usage are the virtual ma uh, agents. So the virtual machine agents used by CI Jenkins IO are Azure ephemeral machines. So we need to check the template for these machines, install the tools, and ensure that the daemon starts during the boot sequence. So each time CI Jenkins IO spin up a new agent, a new Linux VM agent, then a RNGD and a VHD daemon will start and that will add entropy. So any builds in Java that will use the cryptographic function will have increased entropy that will help them on their work. So we also have container agent and permanent agent uh, work, but right now it's not the priority. Priority is on VM agent. As such, uh, we have assigned J since he recently did a lot of work on the Packer image templates. Because right now it's adding new packages and eventually starting demons, enabling demons on the Packer image. We released the new version and that should be good enough. So is is the the need and the scope are the need and the scope okay for everyone? Cool. So that will be J main task for the upcoming week, as far as I can tell. J works on Azure VM templates. So Linux only. Uh, GSOC uh, transfer of resources, it's on hold. We have three issues that require a minor action from us, or uh, that could be communication, helping transfer repo, giving specifications. It was on hold due to update center. Um, I will keep them across. Uh, the milestone, if we cannot have time to respond, we will remove milestone and we will see later. Uh, at least I should be able to communicate the intent on the, on the mentors, so to help. But we don't have a lot of things to do, so I believe it should be okay. Uh, Gradle plugin uses a proprietary dependency, no action required for us. Uh, I don't know if we had the news on that topic, Mark. I don't. Um, it was discussed haven't... by Daniel and by Oleg, and they both agreed this is one that can wait several weeks as needed. They're working through it. Uh, Oleg attended yesterday's governance board meeting and okay. is aware and is focused on how to um, that his his. His, he's working on bringing it to a successful conclusion, but there are some complications there that he needs time to work on it. Licensing is not easy. 
Right, exactly. And I've put on hold the Infra CI Jenkins IO GH API rate limit. It requires Elm short uh, work and additions. We That one was absolutely on hold. It's a bonus. And right now we didn't have time. Uh, so I I will carry that one over milestone until end of September uh, as well. I hope we will have time to continue on this one. We are not blocked anymore, at least. Uh, so we have new issues to triage. Uh, we have a support issue, update permission for the tinfoil scan plugin. Uh, I've pointed out that the user should open a pull request on repository permission updater. So I haven't checked if they answered, they should check. So it's on the new milestone, it's a support level one. Um, yeah, we'll wait for feedback from them. We have an update CLI issue written by Stefan for improvement of a manifest. So Jay, if you are uh, bored by uh, RNG entropy or if you finish the task early, you can start looking at this one. It's a set of minor improvements. I'm if really you need nice with yeah, you, Jay. Okay. I, think, I think if you get bored, you got something else. <laughs> I get it done. <laughs> um, we have two GDK21 related uh, tasks. I propose we delay them for next week, but I will want to start moving controllers to GDK21 instead of GDK17, and then the agent runtime. So this, sorry, these two issues should be worked on end of September, if that's okay for you, Jay. That can be delayed. There is no emer there are no emergency, and that could be done even when I in holidays. Stefan is absolutely able to handle that change with Jay. Um, the idea will be to change our controller. So, Mark, can you correct me? But I remind, I, I'm sure I've read that we have to move controller first and then we move agent runtimes because GDK21 controller is theoretically able to handle GDK17 agents, but not the, the other way around. Should work, but. Actually, I, th I think it's the other way around, actually. We agents need agent to migrate. First. Right, because. Because the 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 controller ships Java classes to the agent, if we upgrade the controller first, the agents won't be able to process the Java twenty one oh. classes that are shipped. So now, in in actuality, because well, yeah, so that's that's the safest, I think. So the ideal is is we move the agents first and then the controller. Okay. And, so, and we've got yep. plenty of users who report, we've got many users who report that they they use a new, we just had one on community.jenkins.io where a user said, oh, I realized I'm running Java 17 agents with a Java 11 controller. The answer is that is that is generally safe. Okay. So yeah, that will be uh, something for in two weeks after the update center, but that would right. be a good one uh, because uh, it, uh, it's now unlocked with the work of JE, so we can mm -hmm. continue. Great. Uh, that's all for me. Uh, do we have other issues? Or do you have other topics to add to the milestone? I don't see other triage issue except the two one we just mentioned. OK. So that's all. We have Oktoberfest. Should we discuss Oktoberfest now or during next team meeting? I'd I'd like to do it now if we could yep. just just to be sure that we're aligned and if there are if there are surprises there mm -hmm. we can we can re correct our alignment. So one of the things that um, Darren Pope proposed is to remove all Hacktoberfest labels or Hacktoberfest topics from all GitHub repositories uh, so that we actively choose to subscribe to accepting and reviewing Hacktoberfest proposals. And, and I, I, for the, the plugin maintainer side, I like it very much because it's been a year since people submitted those topics at least. And some of those plugins are no longer maintained or the maintainer is now not available to review pull requests. Um, the question to the infra team is, is it the same for you? Would you, would you like to, participate in Hacktoberfest? And do we want to participate in Hacktoberfest? Do we have good first issues identified that 
Hacktober for Fest participants might be able to, to work on. Kevin is working on the documentation and has already identified several that are, are reasonable, reasonable things for new contributors. Um, so open question first, do we want to be in Hacktoberfest? And it's okay if the answer is no, because October is a busy month for us. We'll have lots of work anyway. Open the conversation. I will say yes, if we can. The problem is the second assertion. I don't think, uh, I, I've started to search for easy tasks to give to Jay. Uh, so he can get started on the infra. And I realized that most of the easy tasks for us, in fact, require some time to spend on reviewing, deploying. Right. And the recent stats, Jenkins SIO migration shows that even because it comes from GSOC, from people who worked on other optimum than ours, and now we are facing the consequences of rushing this. So my proposal is that we explicitly say by default, we won't participate on the infra part unless we find easy things to participate. If we have time, I will prefer helping Kevin or other uh, SIG on the Jenkins project to review and spend time as a, yes, individually on Oktoberfest. And that will be okay. We can decrease the amount of operation on the infra to let time to people to mentor and help. That will be a way of participating or even, and also, of course, specifically, I say that for Jay, if you want to participate as a contributor, if you want to open Oktoberfest issues on other projects, we will support that by managing the operations. Same for Stefan, same for the world team. But as a receiver of pull requests, I absolutely agree we should remove the labels. And I propose that we say, no, that's not the right moment. Uh, we have the update center, we have people in holidays, we have things to move across clouds. The effort needed and the focus needed will be put in danger by helping on the Oktoberfest, even if it's a good thing to have marketing uh, wide. But we can still help to review pull requests yep. from Oktoberfest, even in other organizations. Yep. Because that will be a controlled effort. Mm, we, know, okay. we know we can Agreed. spend regularly time. Yeah, so I, I like I like how you summarized it, Damien, and I agree with it. For me, uh, I realized as a plugin maintainer that past years I was I was very much oh I'll take a Hacktoberfest contribution to any plugin, and I still have some contributions that are sitting open after a year or more. So I did no service to those Hacktoberfest contributors by welcoming them, saying oh submit it, but then not reviewing it. And I like your observation, let's not do that disservice. Let's admit we're not going to do Hacktoberfest except for if there are cases where we find explicit things. Your, your experience looking for good first issues for Jay matches mine and trying to find good first issues for new contributors. I realized every time I cleaned up a bug database, I got rid of a bunch of things, but hardly ever did I find things that were actually clearly good for a first time user that didn't need a serious tutorial or didn't cause me to do more work than the new contributor did. And, and I don't want that, right? I don't want, this is not an opportunity for us to have random work piled on us. <laughs> exactly. And, and to be quite honest, the Oktoberfest two years ago did treated a lot of issues but we didn't. We weren't able to find new easy issues to get started after this. So, right. so they were done. Like okay, we spent some time. That was okay. Last year we failed to find any, and Jay can testify that an issue that looks like, that doesn't look big and look easy, such as adding GDK, is in fact a trap yeah. and yeah, a loop is... or, and a wormhole. <laughs> yeah, but and you it's... love those. Yeah. You 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 make them look like it's easy, it's cool, and then boom. Yes. <laughs> I'm right. a good fisherman. And, and, <laughs> and eg exactly. So good. Okay. So we, it feels like, like we're aligned that we will intentionally not, we will intentionally remove all the Hacktoberfest topics from Jenkins infra repositories. And if we find good first issues and we find enough to justify them, then we can add Hacktoberfest topics to selective repositories as needed. 
Good. Thank you. Very good. Don't seem to have which won't have team consequences. The, but yeah, um, I'm sorry. And again, Jay, Stefan, Kevin, if you want either helping on other SIG or contributing yourself for the Oktoberfest, please do so. Just let us know and we will adapt the time. That's not a problem. The important is control the effort. That's really the wording here. Right, right. Well, and 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 we for me, it's it's taken me a long time to realize that we want things that are valuable to the Jenkins project. And if we pile work on ourselves just to, to involve someone without it being invaluable to Jenkins, we've actually not helped the project enough. So yeah, very good. Okay, I stopped sharing, that's all for me. Do you have one last thing to say on recording? Oh, okay, so I'm going to pause the recording and see you next week. Bye-bye.